Okay, so welcome to our interviews. Um, we're restarting these interviews and that, and tonight we've got the lovely Eloise with us. So Eloise has been doing some great things recently, and uh, I think I've known Eloise for quite a few years now, since she was a, a little girl. <laughs> Hello, <Wow>. Eloise. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that young, but... <laughs> no. I think, yeah, how old were you when you when I sort of met you from the basement door when you came down? I think 19. So, 19. Oh, God, how old are you now? Yeah. 24. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I thought it was younger than that, but it's okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, I suppose it is, yeah. It's about five, yeah, it's about five, six years, isn't it? Yeah. About that, yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're going to chat about a few things that you're doing tonight. And we're going to look at some of your clips of some singles you've put out. Um, which you've done, a, you've done actually, you've been working really hard this year, haven't you? So what's it like being sort of like, because you, have you found the opportunity to work in lockdown much easier because you've got more time to do it and you, you can't do anything else? Yeah, I mean, uh, I suppose, yeah, it's kind of because I work at home anyway um not being able to kind of go out and socialize and stuff it's been all right because I've been in my zone in my room um and yeah just use all the time um and energy to put into my music um so yeah I've, I found it like surprisingly helpful <laughs> so yeah cool. so you've been doing I mean you've been doing music for quite a while now when did you when did you sort of start when did you sort of first, what age were you when you first sort of thought, right, I want to be a musician, when you actually made that choice, right, I want to be a musician? Um, I mean, I started writing songs when I was like eight, but I just like did it for fun. And then I started learning the guitar when I was about 11. And then, so yeah, I mean, it just kind of wasn't really like one moment. I was like, yeah, I want to do this. So I just kind of, it just like came naturally to me and then uh, as time went on I just didn't see myself doing anything else and I was like well I love doing this so this is what I do um you know even if it wasn't a job like it's what I do so um yeah but then obviously as I got older I realized that was definitely like what I wanted to do mm. that's cool so it's like a sort of like you know you're doing something you really enjoy and it's a hobby blah blah, yeah. blah and then and then all of a sudden it becomes more of a an occupation of your time and yeah, and it's like I can't not do it sort of thing. You know, I'd be doing it even if it was just me, like, mm. in the world. It's just, like, what I do. Yeah. So, yeah. So what's the sort of, like, I mean, do you, do you ever sort of, like, and I suppose this this could be a question to any musicians and everything, Could do you ever sort of, like, switch music off and just go, just don't want to think about music for a day or an hour? Um, or is it just constantly there's music in your head and ideas and... I I try to because you know I can end up especially like being a composer and doing all the production and everything it can just be like you know in your head like constantly and you need to so sometimes I do try and switch to another subject um because also I end up you know because I put like all my focus into my music um that I do need to like a switch you know turn it off and then um you know, read a book on history, you know, something completely different mm. um, just to, um, yeah, because I think, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, like, yeah, too much of anything, you know, and then as well, because I, it's also work at the same time, I need time to relax and sometimes separate myself from music. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so the, pro the process of sort of like what you do, because... Um... So we're going to ask you in a minute how many instruments you play because you you got a horrendous <laughs> accompaniment that you play yourself. <laughs> and then when when people listen to your tracks, which we're going to listen to in a minute, we're going to listen to a clip of one of your tracks, and there's a lot of instruments in there. Um, and then to find out that actually you've played all of those and you put all of those in, you know, and um, yeah, it's quite it's quite fascinating what you play. Um, but the process of um, I suppose the the composing and the production. If you're doing both, they sort of marry together. They sort of mingle. There's not a sort of like, I'm going to compose this and then mm -hmm. I'm going to produce it. Or I suppose it's it's it come it's it's working side by side all the time. It sort of links into each other, is it? 
Yeah, like um, mm. it depends on the song. So some songs will be like very much like I'll have the production kind of in my head, like the idea um, and the song will mainly kind of be built up from a chord structure um, and like vocal melody. So I can just play that just like without them to record it. I just, and, mm. and then, and then I kind of know what kind of production, but then obviously as you go along, then things can pop up and that. And then other songs, um, they can kind of build up as I go along and the production can like completely change my original idea of the song. Mm. Um, yeah, and, and because I haven't got like a band where I can say, play that and then we'll change this and see how it sounds. I just have to like, you know, keep quite a lot in my head sometimes and, and then like put it into, you know, record it. And if it doesn't sound good, just do it a different way, all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. Quite, it yeah. sounds like quite a tough process to go through on your own sort of doing it on your own but it's like it's remarkable sort of like the, the finished sort of stuff that comes out is pretty cool Thanks. um <clears throat> we get we're going to have a listen to amber love now quickly it just there's a clip there's a, a video clip here of amber love we're not going to listen to the whole thing we're just going to do a, a clip so if anyone wants to see or hear the music they can go to eloise official um and find you on youtubes and instagrams and everything but but we're just going to show you give people a little taster now so we'll We'll pop back in a minute and we'll have a look at Amber Love, okay? So there we go. That was Amber Love. Well, a clip of Amber Love, anyway. Which when did, when that came out earlier this year, wasn't it? Yeah, March. March. Was just was that just just after lockdown happened, or just before it? I think just after, like twenty seven. Yeah. Because I know that we've talked about sort of your plans on how you how you want to sort of release something and when you want to release it and stuff. And it's always been a bit of a, a difficult thing yeah. for you to get because it's like you know. So yeah. So tell us a little bit about Amber Love. So, um, <laughs> so what the music or the meaning of the song? Um, yeah, well, let's go for the meaning of the song first, and then yeah. So it's kind of um, yeah. So it's about uh, kind of like a story of someone being enticed into a wonderland. Um, they promise, you know, like pleasures and stuff, and then. Um, as time goes on they realise that she was like a lie um, and they're like the rats following the Pied Piper uh, so it leads to their uh, destruction so mm. yeah hence um, in the video for the Pied Piper yeah 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 um, and what, what sort of like so what led you to sort of write a, a song about that unless it's personal experience we don't want to sort of drive into your personal experiences but <laughs> Um, I suppose, I mean, it's an interesting concept. I mean, it's, it's a, obviously like, it's not just a fairy tale, like it happens in life. Um, mm. and yeah, I mean, I find, I find the story of the Pied Piper really interesting anyway. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to explore the kind of psychedelic 
kind of a mix of dark and light as well. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's kind cool. of yeah. <laughs> and and then so that the music for that so um. I mean, it is, it is, yeah, there is, I, the psychedelic influence is very strong. So, so, so why, why go, I mean, apart from exploring light and dark and all that, but why, why go down a sort of psychedelic route? I mean, is that your genre, your style? Yeah, it just comes naturally to me. Um, so it's like, I like when I do my music to kind of be transported into a, a different world. Um and then explore so then with different songs it's like different worlds like different ideas different atmospheres different colors um so yeah it's kind of how and then it just kind of you know like the repeating the loops in the song um you know similar like sort of like a carousel um going round and round uh sort of hypnotic so it just kind of comes naturally and then i also I like kind of merging the lyrics and the music together as well. Like I think that's important, like really important in a song. Um, and usually, yeah, my lyrics tend to be quite sort of about nature and dreamy. Um, and then, yeah, so I represent that in my music as well. Yeah, it's cool. Good stuff, man. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so the the instruments, we get onto the instruments now that, that so... Um, so for Amber Love, how many instruments are in that? In that so, so. <laughs> um, Amber Love has got okay, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, bass, synthesizer, drums, percussion, f- flute, um, sitar. Uh, I think it got sitar in it. Um, yeah, I think I guess, yeah. maybe Mizuki. I can't, yeah. Yeah. That sort of, and then obviously vocals. Yeah, and you play all of those. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite, so how did you get to play all of those instruments? I mean, where was your, <clears throat> you said you started playing guitar at 11. Mm-hmm. So then when yeah, did you so start, when did you start messing about with other instruments? I mean, so I start teaching myself the guitar at 11. Um, and then, uh, I mean, I got really into like the Beatles and stuff. Um, and I thought like, I don't know, I just, I just kind of picked <clears throat> stuff up as I went along, you know, I'd listen to a song I had, I think, oh, I want to play the drums to that. And then we had a drum kit and then I'd play it. And then, um, yeah, just, and then when I got the instruments, I just kind of, uh, just picked it up as I went along. Um, and it's fun because it's like novelty, you know. If you get bored of one thing, you can move on to another thing, yeah. Um, and then create different melodies, different ideas, and stuff. Um, yeah. So it just just came naturally, just over the years, just kind of yeah. Mm. And then the sitar as well. Um, I had a couple of lessons in that, but I always wanted to learn it, partly because like the Beatles are Indian influence, and I, I like. Uh, Indian classical music as well, and that has a bit of a psychedelic sort of. They, you know, I remember the old sort of like psychedelic records. They had that sort of sitar yeah. and, the, and the the Asian influence in them as well, didn't they? So yeah, that's the thing. Like the mix of the Western and the Eastern music. Um, I think you can hear like influences in that in my music. I don't just use standard like pentatonic scales or whatever. Mm. I, I I like to kind of push the barriers a bit yeah yeah good so okay so out of all the instruments that you have or have played is there a favorite uh the guitar definitely okay <laughs> i call myself yeah I'm, I'm a guitarist you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool and so um we're gonna go and listen to another track now and watch another video um this is um voices of the sea um and then we'll come back and we'll chat about that um and then we'll yeah find out a little bit more about eloise and maybe the dark side of eloise is there a dark side is there a dark side to eloise <laughs> back in a mo <laughs> Oh 
okay welcome back um to eloise uh, official eloise so whatever it's just eloise isn't it so we we'll just call it eloise yeah um yeah. stop calling you official because otherwise that'd be <laughs> silly um uh so yeah that was um voice of the sea so what was what's what's that all about then that's uh same sort of genre but it's a little bit different for the other one remember love yes so um it's kind of about uh you know like the mermaids calling across to the sailors um kind of hypnotizing them um and it's it's like i suppose the concept of that uh like aphrodite like people falling down to um pleasure and uh similar to amber love that is ends up being their destruction mm. um but the, yeah i've sort of done it from a yeah with the mermaid sort of corner that's that's all the references and the lyrics are all kind of to do with the sea um yeah. but yes yeah, a similar concept of uh being won over by pleasure and it ending up um yeah destroying you mm. Bit of a thing going on here, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, um, so yeah. So you you mentioned um your inf one of your influences in the Beatles earlier on. So what are, what are your other influences? I mean, who else who else do you sort of like has greatly influenced your your um, music or just you as a person? Maybe you know. So um. Music wise, um, say, so yeah, like the Beatles, Led Zeppelin, Moody Blues, uh, The Doors, Eric Clapton, Pink Floyd, Gary Newman, uh, mm -hmm. Project Pitchfork. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so a mix of, um, yeah, like kind of classic rock, psychedelic rock, um, in the 60s and 70s, and then also some electronic uh gothic stuff as well yeah that's good. so that's, that's the good. yeah the musical influences yeah um and then like say other influences uh particularly with my music stuff like nature um my imagination uh like stories um yeah things like this and books that sort of stuff um yeah cool <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah um <clears throat> and that that's that i mean that covers quite a range of of years decades of sort of music doesn't it sort of like and different sort of styles that sort of you know mm. um yeah it's i think it's quite interesting how, how, what what people really sort of get into and what they like and how that can actually influence their stuff but your stuff is i think your stuff is pretty unique i mean you mm -hmm. can hear influences in it but it's still it's still pretty unique and i think the sort of like you know what you do with the vocals and <clears throat> and the way you sort of put instruments in there and everything it's uh yeah i mean it, it's sometimes it's like i'm sitting there going well this is like an orchestra of stuff and i know eloise and she's like this you know she's it's one girl it's like you know yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's pretty um it's pretty impressive stuff and it's quite a, it's quite a big Thanks. sound i think isn't it yeah i mean i like yeah i mean i love layering um all the stuff and it's uh yeah just kind of you know piece it together uh mm. and yeah it's cool as well because hearing the like even for me hearing the finished result um because it's not like play with a band and you already know how it sounds all together it's like i have to record it all to hear what it all sounds together as well mm. so it's it's satisfying you know it's because you you're putting the work together and then you're hearing stuff you know even i'm hearing stuff for the first time with recording it oh yeah so, yeah it's rewarding yeah yeah it's cool <clears throat> and um with the production side of things that you're when you're doing your production and stuff like that i mean that's uh it's, it's quite a skill on its own to to know how to produce something to you know where mm -hmm. to to get the you know the timings right and yeah like say how to layer it and what to, and you use all sort of compressors and and things like that and uh and yeah 
sound effects and stuff like that on the system, yeah. <laughs> so I know yeah, that, I yeah, know depending work, on... <laughs> I mean, I try and get it, uh, like, each instrument um, and the vocals as well. I try and get it, uh, the raw version, sounding as good as possible um, so that I don't have to, um, you know, so, like, the stuff I'm adding in the production is just enhancing the sound not changing stuff not getting rid of mistakes and stuff I try and make it pretty spot on also then it saves time for me um yeah. but and then yes yeah, so it's kind of years of trial and error um and over time as well your ear starts to you know things I can hear now in my music I couldn't hear two years ago um yeah. which is just over time <clears throat> just if you're doing it all the time um you just develop like an ear for it and then you can hear certain things um yeah. it just gets tiring you know but it's, it's yeah it's what what i do <laughs> so i know that sort of like when i've done um like years ago i went and did a bit of um fi- uh what's it called final cuts work which uh, on the mac and everything you know and that's like say the logic and the final cut the sort of movie and the and the music sort of things and there's these drop down menus upon drop down menus upon drop down menus you think well, if you don't if you're not careful you can get lost in a drop down menu like 20 20 yeah. 000 different things away and you think, what does this do and does it have, a, have an influence on it so have mm. you have you learnt all of the stuff in there or is it just like you know how much stuff is there for you still to learn really i suppose what i'm going to is like how much more have you got to learn or how much do you think um, you're going to learn or do you want to learn more or just, are you satisfied <laughs> well i think sometimes like the more you know the more you realize you don't know uh, same with like l- playing stuff in the inch, like you know, playing the guitar and stuff as well. Um, you know, a few years ago, I might be thinking you've sorted out, I couldn't, you know, do this, whatever. And then the more you know, you're like, oh, wait, she has a lot I don't know. Mm. Um, and it's, yeah, the same with, I suppose, production. But I suppose, yeah, there's also a limit of you could just go on forever. Um, and sometimes I can just be mixing a song for ages and you know is this too loud is this tiny bit too you know whatever um and then sometimes it helps to take a break from it um and or as well to get someone else uh to listen with a fresh ear um and see well, what they I've, can pick up because I've always used to that a few just times be... I? <laughs> <laughs> listen to this too <laughs> well, <laughs> so like yeah because i mean you could be, just be going on forever like mm. down rabbit burrows or whatever of like different sounds and but also i think um because the nature of my music is that it's quite kind of earthy it's quite raw um it's not a massive amount of effects um that uh yeah like they're like what I've done so far, I'm happy with, and I don't think, oh, if I did this effect, it could be better. It's like, mm. it's just kind of, you know, I like the kind of raw sound as well. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there, there, you can, def- you can definitely pick out the instruments and know, you know, what the instrument is when it's being played. So there's no sort of like, what was that, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. We're gonna go on and listen to and watch another video, and this is your latest um one um called butterfly so this is your very latest which is out now um Mm -hmm. video um and then we'll we'll come back and chat about that um and then we'll wrap up and we'll just find a little bit more about you um yeah and then we'll we'll finish Mm -hmm. up i think yeah okay so let's go and have a listen and watch butterfly Time. 
So butterfly. Let's have a quick rundown on butterfly. What's all that about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's um sort of capturing the like the meaning of the song is that it's sort of capturing the solitude of a butterfly, um and exploring the freedom in that. Um, so yeah, in a kind of mix of like it's a positive way, but also slightly darkish kind of you know solitude it's not necessarily loneliness but yeah. solid um yeah i was waiting for its disruption <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of bad, I think. have we got the same thing going on in every song it's just you know, it's like... <laughs> but there's so we've gone we've gone from amber love mm-hmm. on the earth to Voice of the sea and the sea, oh, yeah. and now we're in the air. Yeah. So we've it's gone good... through. We've gone through a different thing, and so the, the, the fire the, next. Yeah. So the the butterfly is sort of like escaping the destruction by being able to fly. I think and that's, <laughs> it doesn't have to be even if it's influenced, it can still get away from destruction <laughs> if it's drawn in by the. I'm glad you're not the songwriter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cool. Um, right. So, um, what what plans? Uh, what's yeah? So, what's next? Is fire next? Is that what's coming up next? Or have you got <laughs> have you got other songs written ready to go? Um, um. So I've got uh, a lot of songs, um, and I got a lot of demos I've recorded over the years. Um, so it's just kind of working out what to you know what is the right decision next what's the most uh, also what's the most relevant to how I feel how I am now um because that's the thing uh to keep you know keep up keep up the motivation um and everything uh is I want to I know yeah I mean I want to put myself so, into it so, so I want to do um a song that I also is relevant whether it's a new song that I write nowadays or if it's a song I wrote two years ago but it's particularly relevant to me now um so yeah I've got quite a few things lying around I'm just trying to work out what's the best thing to to do um and also to explore stuff um musically as well to kind of push the boundaries and to challenge myself as well so yeah 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 so we'll be looking forward for some more stuff coming out and um as I said before so you're you're we'll put the links up on this for your social media so that people can see go and go and watch the videos and listen to the songs and whatever um difficult thing for you is like gigging i suppose and i think we've talked about this before how mm-hmm. how on earth are you going to gig i mean you'd have to do a, a, an acoustic version of every song that you've done but it's like you, you couldn't unless you've got a band to come along with you and they i mean they yeah it. i mean in future you know when i'm uh performing more and more um I think definitely get a band together because you know like you just can't get the the same energy without the band playing the songs um especially stuff like Amber Love you know there's a lot of layers and stuff you Mm. you need um so yeah you can do stuff acoustically uh just me and my guitar but like yeah one of the things about my music is that a lot of layers a lot of things going on and you just can't you know portray that with just me and the guitar so yeah. it's, it's nice in some ways but then uh yeah so that will be the what i'll what i'll have to do is get a band together yeah or you can strap some cymbals to your knees and some yeah, I could, yeah. <laughs> start with that malarkey play the piano with your toes you know <laughs> <laughs> like a real freak. <laughs> um, that's cool. Okay, so we uh, let's do let's do some quick fire. We like to do a little quick fire thing for you here. So I'm just okay. going to give you two things, and you just say the first one. Um, <sighs> there's nothing bad in here at all. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> are you ready? Well, I don't trust you, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't trust me. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Did I do that to you? No. 
Um, yeah. but really, honestly, I wouldn't do that to anybody. So they're, they're, <laughs> they're just simple. They're just sort of quick things. Okay, so we're going to go in three, two, one. Okay, coffee or tea? Mm -hmm. Quick fire. Coffee. <laughs> Depends what deck of coffee. Vodka or gin? Vodka. Documentary or comedy? Documentary. Rock or funk? Rock. Sleep. Gold or silver? Silver. Dog or cat? Cat. England or Wales? England. Marmalade or jam? <laughs> Huh? Marmalade or jam? Oh, marmalade. <laughs> marmalade. McDonald's or Burger King? Um. <laughs> McDonald's or Burger King? Burger King. Okay, cool. That's it. That's That's it. See? And the only one you did really quickly, and there was no hesitation, was England or Wales. Have you got something against the Welsh? I mean, I <laughs> I mean, why is that even a question, you know? Just fun questions. There are many Welsh people at the basement right. door. Huh? There are many Welsh people at the basement door. I don't know. Uh, they're all welcome, though. I wouldn't be able to turn them away. It sounds like you might be I mean, quite anti-Welsh. The question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just a sort of like England. It was quite, it was quite yeah, it was quite a sharp answer. We'll, we'll replay that back. I might actually put that in a loop. At the end of this show and just go like England or Wales, England. That's just the way you say it. It's like, yeah, it's strong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a, you know, patriotic. Yeah, but tea or coffee, quite ambiguous. Well, it like, depends on the day. On the day. Yeah, and like the <laughs> the time and what you're having with it, or if you're not having it. Like there are a lot of things to think about, but. I'd say coffee. Okay. <laughs> what about the marmalade and jam? That was a bit sort of like, or was that just the, an internet freeze that we had then? You yeah, it was know? an internet freeze, yeah. Uh, okay, so there wasn't a serious problem with marmalade or jam. <laughs> okay. I'd say definitely marmalade. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Well, look, it's been lovely chatting to you, Eloise. We look forward to your future stuff coming out and um, and say so we'll, we'll put social media sort of clips up here and everything and whatever. And, uh, and yeah, and... Also, just to sort of thank you for, so far, you've been a judge at the Battle of the Bands for us um, for mm -hmm. this 20, is it 2020? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. it was 20, it? Beginning of the year. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to come and judge at the at the last one. Um, and I did, I did an interview with Dave Ambrose and we sort of mentioned whether Mick Fleet would come down and he's like, he's quite sort of like, well, yeah, he might come over. It's like, it'd be really good. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> So we'll wait and see for that. Yeah, that'll be interesting. But yeah, um, we'll look forward to hearing from you soon. And uh, yeah, just let us know what you're doing, and we'll we'll keep you keep you on our on our radars and everything. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, any final words of wisdom to any young musicians out there that are thinking about doing their own production or or playing lots of instruments or <clears throat> um, just keep doing. You know, like if you like it, someone else is bound to like it. Uh, and just, yeah, don't look sideways as well. You know, don't look at what other people are doing. Just focus on what you're doing. Uh, that's so, yeah. good. That's really nice advice. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers. Eloise. <laughs>